Nearly 90 years after making it to our screens, King Kong is an undeniable cultural icon that has staggered through the ravages of time. The King Kong franchise has always been ahead of its time with its ground-breaking special effects and stop-motion animation, which brings the beast to life on big screens. When Mary and C. Cooper launched King Kong back in 1933, the character struck a chord with the audience for Kong's portrayal of a tragic monster, both terrifying and sympathetic, adding to his enduring appeal. The film's themes of beauty beauty and beast and consequences of exploitation and the power of nature resonated with viewers, making King Kong a symbol of untamed power and the consequences of man's hubris. Over the years, the legacy of King Kong has been adapted into various spin-offs, remakes and sequels that have added their own unique takes on the story while staying true to the core elements of Kong's character and the allure of the Skull Island setting. In this video, we will delve into the psychological details of this magnificent beast and decode the true essence behind its haunting grandeur. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How big is King Kong? Since Kong's first appearance on our screens in 1933, his shape and size have progressed quite a bit. This beast has not only turned into an American popular culture icon, but has also retained its position as a cinematic legend with every on-screen adaptation. Aside from Godzilla, only Kong has been able to make a significant mark in the giant monster movie genre. As of now, we have witnessed the beast in eight live-action films with six different iterations brought to life. But unlike Godzilla, Godzilla, Kong has always been capable of depicting human emotions, exuberating some form of sympathetic connection with mankind. The biggest version of Kong, as of yet, has been seen in the last released movie in 2021, Godzilla vs. Kong, where the beast stands a whopping 335 feet tall. This big-budget enigma was a spectacle to behold as the two most famous on-screen beasts were pitted against each other. When Marion Cooper first introduced us to King Kong in 1993, he envisioned a 50-feet beast. But unfortunately, the actual model in the movie was scaled down to approximately 18 feet on Skull Island and 24 feet in New York, which made the beast appear of a different stature in each spot. Cooper's approach to adjust Kong's height to suit the specific settings and visual illusions was employed in each shot, which sort of confused the audience and hence the specifications of his height was open to interpretation. Again, in 1933, when Son of Kong was released, the gorilla was no more than 12 feet tall and was famous for his white fur unlike his father. The first time the world saw the impossible feat of a gigantic reptile and a gorilla at war was in the 1962 film King Kong vs. Godzilla, produced by the Japanese studio Toho Company. King Kong received a significant size upgrade to match the stature of Godzilla. To ensure a fair and epic battle between the two iconic monsters, Kong was depicted as a towering figure standing at a staggering 147 feet. This adjustment made him on par with Godzilla, who had consistently been portrayed as a colossal creature over a hundred feet tall in various adaptations. The decision to increase Kong's size and make him bulkier was made to level the playing field and create a thrilling clash between the two colossal beings. When Toho Studios was given another chance at King Kong in 1967, they released King Kong Escapes, wherein the Godzilla size was lowered to 65 feet to be pitted against his robotic counterpart. In 1976, Italian director Dino De Laurentiis made a remake of the original King Kong movie of the same name and featured notable changes in the portrait trail of Kong. In this version, Kong was depicted as more human-like compared to his 1933 counterpart. His size was significantly increased, making him even more imposing and larger in proportion to the human characters. On Skull Island, Kong was scaled to a height of 42 feet, and when he made his way to New York City, he reached an impressive 55 feet. This version was a massive commercial success for staying faithful to many aspects of the original classic while incorporating some striking modern updates. Almost a decade later, Paramount brought back Laurentiis for a sequel, wherein the concept of King Kong having a family was introduced, which humanized the beast. Furthermore, but its height towered to a staggering 60 feet to fit his bestial persona in King Kong Lives. Again, in 2005, Peter Jackson's reboot of Hong Kong came with significant updates 
for a more realistic approach. The giant ape's stature was brought down to 25 feet, making him the smallest Kong since the original 1933 film. In 2017, Legendary's MonsterVerse launched a new interpretation of the ape, wherein he was depicted as one of the titans on Earth. This expanded mythos positioned Kong as part of a larger ecosystem of powerful beings and significantly increased his height to an impressive 104 feet. This fiercely enigmatic beast's size keeps varying with each adaptation, which makes many wonder about his height. But it seems like Murray and Cooper left it to the audience to interpret the real size of Kong, and the other directors simply have followed his lead ever since. Can Kong grow up to be as big as Godzilla? Okay, so if the MonsterVerse films have been any indication, Kong has the potential to grow to match or even exceed Godzilla's colossal size. In the last Kong experience, we witnessed the 355 feet tall Kong, while Godzilla stood at 393 feet tall. However, considering Kong's status as an adolescent or teenager and his potential for further growth, it is suggested that he can continue to increase in size. Given Kong Kong's age of around 200 years old and his unresolved anger over the tragic death of his parents, his growth and development signifies a progression in his character. It is reasonable to assume that as Kong matures and confronts greater challenges, his size will also increase. This growth is essential for him to match up against the towering might of Godzilla. His character has always seemed to evolve, especially in terms of physical growth. So in MonsterVerse's narrative trajectory, the need for Kong's height to come at par with Godzilla is significant significant if the films aim to create a thrilling and visually spectacular showdown between these two iconic creatures. What makes Kong so gigantic? Kong's massive size is the result of various factors intertwined within the MonsterVerse narrative. As established before, Kong's growth is essential to match the strength and power of Godzilla's colossal stature. As a creature set to challenge the mammoth reptile in a climactic battle, Kong needs to be on equal footing to stand a chance in their epic clash. His growth is a natural progression within the franchise, starting with his portrayal in Kong, Skull Island, where he stood at an impressive of height of approximately 104 feet, wherein he was showcased as a teenager still in the process of maturing. The events of Godzilla vs. Kong took place years after Skull Island, leaving ample potential for Kong to continue his growth and development into his current gigantic 335 feet stature. From a filmmaking perspective, Kong's increased size enhances the visual spectacle of the film. It allows for more dynamic and awe-inspiring action sequences, creating a sense of grandeur and epic proportions as mentioned by director Jordan Vogt Roberts, who wanted to give this apex primate a godlike allure. Another factor contributing to Kong's immense size is his status as the last surviving member of his species. His towering presence symbolizes his role as an alpha and protector, emphasizing his unique position in the monsterverse. This growth not only showcases his physical transformation, but also reflects on the beast's tragic internal journey. Physically strong is King Kong. Kong's tremendous physical strength makes him one of the most powerful titans in existence. Pretty sure just a roar from him is enough for mortals to pee in their pants. His sheer size and muscular build, especially his arms, contribute to his immense power. As a teenager, we saw him throwing boulders nearly half his size to yeet aerial targets with precision. He even fought a whole ass Maya squad with just his muscle power. His conquests were never ending. Kong also exhibited his strength by ripping off the tongue of the Alpha Skull Crawler when it stuck onto him, ultimately killing it. He could disable comparatively smaller Skull Crawlers with a simple punch, and with sheer force, he could wrestle the Alpha Skull Crawler, ultimately pinning it to the ground. As Kong reached adulthood, his strength continued to grow. He demonstrated the ability to overpower immensely powerful titans like Godzilla. During their battles, Kong overpowered Godzilla multiple times, harnessing his unstoppable momentum to wrestle and throw him around. He even made Godzilla stagger on the ground with his powerful punches. Although it didn't significantly slow Godzilla down, he surely tasted quite a bit of dirt. Despite being sedated and waking up in a cold environment, Kong managed to fight and kill two warbats by severing their heads 
off from their spine. Afterwards, he embarked on an incredible journey, running over a thousand miles to reach his ancestral home. During the last confrontation with Mecha Godzilla, Kong's immaculate strength was once again on full display. When Godzilla attacked Kong's axe, he effortlessly stopped an incoming punch from the mech with just one arm, despite previously straining to maintain a grip on Mecha Godzilla's tail. After chopping off Mecha Godzilla's limbs, Kong proceeded to tear off the doppelganger robot's head, pulling out its entire a spinal cord in the process. We have also seen him easily lift a crashed helicopter off a trapped Skur Buffalo with just one hand. When Kong was seen effortlessly breaking free from the anchor chains of a wrecked ship, we knew nothing could hold this beast back. In combat, Kong effectively utilizes his strength to engage in battle using ranged weapons and even a melee. His weapon of choice is the magnificent dorsal fin axe, which he had found in the Hollow Earth. Kong's punches have been compared to 4.2 magnitude earthquake and can cause bigger mammoths to wobble. He can get into a berserk rage when pushed to his limits, increasing his strength even further. Kong's physical strength is a crucial aspect of his abilities, allowing him to overpower enemies and withstand attacks of any magnitude. exploring the complex personality of King Kong across the franchise. We have seen Kong's personality to be complex and multifaceted throughout his appearances in the MonsterVerse films. As Skull Island's sole defender, Kong naturally exhibited territorial, secluded, and overprotective behavior, fiercely protecting the island and its fauna from threats like the Skrull Crawlers or the Monarch Expedition crew of 1973. Despite his aggressive nature, there was a glimpse of his more benign side, as seen when he formed a connection with Mason Weaver during the expedition of 1973, after Weaver affectionately touched his face. Kong's loneliness and desire for social contact were evident, and he showed a willingness to protect those who showed him kindness, as demonstrated when he put his life at stake to save Weaver from the Skull Devil. In the Godzilla vs. Kong novelization, Kong would hurl trees at the sun in a daring attempt to actually reach it, which really gives a stark glimpse of how trapped, lonesome, and burdened his life really was as the protector of the island. As he grew into adulthood, Kong became more tolerant towards humans. In one particular instance, he displayed his compassionate side when he tried to drive a group of psychotic vultures away to save an injured scare buffalo. However, despite his efforts, he was unable to rescue the buffalo, which visibly saddened him. After his enigmatic confrontation with Kamazots, the beast demonstrated his sense of heroism by rescuing Audrey Burns, the pilot from a broken fighter jet. During this encounter, he briefly acknowledged Audrey's bravery and her contribution to the fight against Kamazots. As time passed, Kong's aggression towards humans significantly decreased. He forged a unique relationship with an Iwi girl named Jia, who taught him how to communicate using sign language. This friendship highlighted his capacity for compassion and his ability to form emotional connections. Kong's loneliness persevered, and he longed to return home to Skull Island, as he expressed through sign language to Jia. The need for connecting with his other species drove him on his quest to the Hollow Earth. In his last conflict with Godzilla, Kong displayed a strong sense of pride through his unwavering resistance against the dominance of the leading titan, simply roaring in defiance even when physically beaten. However, he ultimately set their feud aside to assist Godzilla in overthrowing Mecha Godzilla, showcasing a willingness to look past grudges and work towards a common goal. As witnessed during his conquests, King Kong was primarily carnivorous, feeding mostly on what he killed. Kong often preyed on Maya squid as part of his diet at Skull Island. When he was transported on a barge in the Tasman Sea, Kong was provided with numerous large fishes to satiate his appetite. During his exploration of the Hollow Earth, when Kong slaughtered two warbats, he consumed the cranial content of one head, reinforcing his carnivorous nature and his ability to sustain himself by hunting and consuming prey. In the Godzilla vs. Kong novel, it was discovered that Kong had attempted to devour a skull crawler that he had incapacitated. However, he found the flavor of its flesh repulsive and disgusting, indicating that not all creatures he encountered were suitable for consumption. Kong's personality encompasses a range of emotions and really sets him apart as a complex giant who is simply misunderstood and lonely.
Is Kong really intelligent? It is no news that for an ape, Kong is the most intelligent of all titans. He demonstrates exceptional problem-solving skills, adaptability, and the ability to learn from his past experiences. Kong's intelligence is evident in his strategic approach to battles, his resourcefulness in utilizing his surroundings, and his ability to craft weapons from whatever he finds at the disposal of his environment. For instance, he devises a weapon resembling a flail by repurposing the propeller salvaged from a wrecked ship, showcasing his ability to repurpose objects in his environment for practical purposes. Additionally, he creates a weapon resembling a club just by using the trunk of a tree, further highlighting his resourcefulness and adaptability. Kong's intelligence is also evident in his ability to rapidly master the utilization of his forebears axe with finesse, recognizing its significance and discovering that it can be fueled using the energy from the hollow earth. This demonstrates his capacity for understanding and utilizing advanced concepts and technologies. In Godzilla vs. Kong, Kong uses a legitimate warbat corpse as a weapon, effectively utilizing it to fend off another attacking warbat. Kong is absolutely magnificent in wielding his battle axe, demonstrating his understanding of its functionality by utilizing it effectively against both Godzilla and Mechagodzilla in enigmatic battles. Moreover, he exhibits near-human level intelligence through his cognitive abilities which extend beyond instinctual behavior. And lastly, his exceptional ability to interact with humans using sign language as witnessed in his unique friendship with Jia. Aside from Mothra, he is the only titan known to possess this skill. He frequently employed sign language to interact and express his thoughts and emotions to Jia, showcasing his capacity for nuanced and meaningful interactions with humans, indicating a higher level of intelligence and the capacity for understanding complex concepts. While Kong's intelligence is not on a par with human intelligence, his ability to learn, adapt, strategize, and communicate makes him a highly intelligent titan in the MonsterVerse. Is King Kong really inclined towards human romance? Can you reproduce? The original 1933 King Kong movie portrayed Kong in a sympathetic light. Despite his monstrous appearance and destructive nature, the film established a connection between Kong and the audience, evoking feelings of pity and empathy for the misunderstood creature. Kong was depicted as a powerful yet tragic figure, driven by his affection for Anne Darrow, the film's heroine. His attraction to Anne was portrayed as instinctual rather than overtly sexual. While the film didn't delve into the darker implications of bestiality, there were moments that implied a primal fascination, such as Kong sniffing his fingers after undressing Anne, which could be inherently creepy. But Anne's fear and resistance to Kong's advances made her a more traditional damsel in distress, and her reluctance to engage with Kong was understandable, given that the circumstances did not really shed much importance on that part. The movie focused more on the tragedy of Kong's existence and his inner ability to navigate a world that feared and exploited him. His capture, transportation to New York, and subsequent rampage were driven by his desperate search for Anne, whom he perceived as his only source of companionship and understanding. The famous line, it was beauty that killed the beast, highlights the real tragedy of Kong's demise, suggesting that it was his emotional connection to Anne that ultimately led him to his downfall. However, in the 1976 version of King Kong, there was a significant departure from the sympathetic portrayal of Kong as the film took a more overtly sexualized approach, emphasizing erotic intentions between Kong and the heroine, played by Jessica Lange. The portrayal of their relationship, including scenes where Kong appeared to respond to Lange's character, deviated from the more nuanced and tragic depiction of their connection in the original film. The 1976 version's mishandling of the relationship between Kong and the heroine, along with its other shortcomings, resulted in a creepy and uncomfortable interpretation of the story. The combination of an unconvincing Kong suit and a tone-deaf approach to delicate moments undermined the prior presentation of Kong in a sympathetic light. And given his height in the movie, there remained the possibility for Kong to mate with a human. As a 7.6 meter tall ape, Kong would probably have privates the same size as an average human male. So as creepy as it sounds, if the romantic arc is ever explored, the route to engage in human romance remains open for the beast. It is also important to note 
hope that subsequent adaptations, including recent ones such as Peter Jackson's 2005 version and Kong's Skull Island in 2017, have been more mindful of avoiding the problematic sexual undertones. These adaptations have focused on portraying Kong's relationship with the human characters as platonic and rooted in compassion, steering clear of the more controversial implications. Kong's ability to reproduce within the boundaries of his own species has been explored in the King Kong Lives movie, where the concept of Kong's family was discussed. A Lady Kong was introduced in the plot, and together they had Baby Kong, who looked exactly like his parents and was the size of an average, regular adult gorilla. Unfortunately, Kong died protecting Baby Kong and Lady Kong from the military, but it does resolve our confusion about Kong's reproducing capabilities. Does Kong have regenerative abilities? In general, Kong's regenerative abilities vary depending on the version and interpretation of the character. In some versions, Kong is portrayed as having regenerative abilities that allow him to heal from injuries at an accelerated rate. This means that if he sustains physical damage, his body can regenerate the damaged tissue quickly and more extensively than a regular creature. However, it is important to note that the regenerative abilities of Kong can differ from one adaptation to another. Some versions may depict him as having limited regenerative powers, while others may not attribute him with any regenerative abilities at all. It ultimately depends on the specific portrayal of Kong in the particular film. Exploring his acute senses. Kong's acute senses contribute to his survival and give him a tactical advantage in navigating and understanding his environment. Compared to other humans or any other creature, Kong has a heightened perception of the senses. His sense of smell is especially notable, allowing him to detect scents and track objects or creatures over long distances. For instance, Kong's ability to see the presence of a Maya squad when he was drinking water from a lake demonstrates his keen olfactory senses and as he can efficiently pick up on faint scents and identify potential threats or prey in his surroundings. Similarly, his exceptional hearing enables him to perceive sounds that may be imperceptible to humans. Kong's ability to attentively heed the helpless call of an ensnared scare buffalo frantically writhing to free itself from a destroyed helicopter demonstrates his acute auditory capabilities. He can detect even subtle noises and locate their sources with precision. In Godzilla vs. Kong, Kong's heightened senses are further emphasized as he can sense his confinement within the dome-shaped monarch facility in the ocean, despite not relying solely on visual cues. This indicates his ability to perceive his environment beyond its visibility to the naked eye. Additionally, Kong's ability to sense Godzilla's impending arrival before the radar systems could detect him highlights his heightened sensory awareness as he can anticipate the presence of other titans or potential threats with ease allowing him to react and prepare accordingly. Does King Kong have the gift of immortality? While King Kong is a powerful and long-lived creature, he is not depicted as being immortal in any of his portrayals. This beast ages and can sustain injuries, which indicates that he is not exempt from the natural processes of life and death. In some adaptations, Kong is portrayed as having an extended lifespan due to his unique physiology and the environment he inhabits. However, this does not make him immortal. It simply means that he is capable of living for an extended period compared to other animals or humans. The idea of Kong being worshipped as a god on Skull Island by tribes and natives is often explored in various adaptations. These portrayals highlight the reverence and awe surrounding his immense power and presence. However, worship and godlike status do not really imply immortality. And he can't survive here. What are some of his inherent weaknesses? Kong's specific weaknesses may vary across different adaptations as each iteration presents its own interpretation of the character. Firstly, he is incapable of surviving in extremely cold climates such as the Arctic as the low temperatures would eventually lead him to freezing to death. Due to his warm-blooded nature, the extreme cold temperatures pose a significant threat to him. In the movie, when Kong was airlifted to Antarctica by Apex Cybernetics, he was in 
visible discomfort, indicating that he would struggle to endure the harsh environment. Nathan Lin, the character in the film, even speculated that Kong would not survive for an extended period in such frigid conditions. Additionally, while Kong has durable and resilient skin, it is not as tough as Godzilla's scales, making him susceptible to injury from heavy munitions and fast-moving sharp objects. His skin has been shown to be wounded when a helicopter's rotor blades grazed and wounded his palm, and artillery rounds severely injured his arm. Additionally, Kong has shown vulnerability to environmental hazards such as fire. In one instance, he was knocked out by napalm fire, which depleted the oxygen around him and caused the burns in a few places. Kong's vulnerability extends to aquatic environments, as he is not a strong swimmer and can be overpowered by creatures like Godzilla who possess water-breathing capabilities. If submerged underwater for an extended period, he would eventually drown since he cannot hold his breath for long. Lastly, Kong is not impervious to the devastating power of Godzilla's atomic breath as he sustains a burn mark on his back when directly hit. However, the burn quickly fizzled out, suggesting that it had minimal long-term effects on the ape titan. Despite his many limitations, King Kong's strength is immaculate, especially his ability to care for other species. This giant is really one of its kind and will always have the potential room for growth within the franchise to successfully retain its position as a pop culture icon. After carefully understanding all versions of Kong in all his appearances across the universe, it is no doubt that this ape truly befits the title of a king. With this, we come to the very end of this video. Please do not forget to mention your favorite Kong movie in the comments below.